Hello everybody, my name is Kara, and today I'm here with part one of my September wrap-up. Slowly starting to catch up, hopefully. The first book I finished in September was The Voting Booth by Brandy Colbert. This is a YA contemporary and we follow two main characters, Duke and Marva, and this is set on the election day and um, at the beginning of the book Duke goes to his polling place and something goes wrong and he's not able to vote. And Marva, who has been like very involved in getting out the vote and um, like this election process and everything, she sees what happens to Duke and she's like, this isn't okay, we have to make sure you can vote. And so the two of them kind of go on this journey through the city for the rest of the day, um, trying to get Duke to be able to vote, trying to figure out what went wrong and how to help him to cast his vote. Throughout the course of the day, other things of course uh, come up or happen. Um, Marva's cat actually goes missing until they team up find her. Um, and we also learn a lot more about both characters and and their family background and about the connection that they have to voting um, and to po the political process and everything. Marva is extremely passionate about it and Duke is also very invested in it. It's not that he doesn't care or doesn't think it's important, um, but as we go through the book we learn a little bit more about why his feelings on these topics are a little more complicated. There's also a lot of discussion of important topics like obviously voter suppression and um, just people not being able to vote who should be able to vote and also things like black identity because um, Duke is biracial, his mother is white and his father is black and we see how that affects his experience. Marva's relationship with her boyfriend is also really not going well. Um, there's a lot of conflict there that we know right from the beginning and so even though this is a like romance partially, um, like Duke and Marva do end up forming a relationship over the course of the day. For one thing, it doesn't feel too quick because their interactions, even though they only have known each other for a short time, um, they feel very meaningful. And for another thing, it never crosses the line into cheating. Um, and also, like I said, we know from the beginning that Marva and her boyfriend, things are not going well with them. So like those issues don't come out of nowhere and it makes sense why Marva would be open to that relationship with Duke. I really liked this. I liked both main characters a lot. Um, like I said, I liked the romance. I thought it was pretty convincing um, considering how short a time they knew each other. And I also really liked all the themes and topics that this book handles. I think it did them really thoughtfully. Um, one of the criticisms I had seen from people is that um, they felt like the messages were a little too obvious and they kind of wrote it off as like, well, it's YA, what do you expect? Of course it's going to be a little obvious, like, I can forgive that. Um, and I actually, I disagree. I didn't actually find the messages to be too obvious or like straightforward or in your face. I will say that I think the fact that um, both these characters ended up talking about all of these issues and topics like in the same day, um, that I feel like you might have to just kind of suspend your disbelief a tiny bit, um, but the actual way that the topics were handled and discussed and that they came up in conversation, like the fact that they were having these conversations, I don't think felt too obvious, if that makes sense. I also think in addition to the other topics I mentioned, um, it did a really great job of showing how people who decide not to vote as a form of protest because they're like, well, the system is broken, the system doesn't work, um, or they're like disenchanted with some aspects of American politics. I think this book did a really great job of showing how that's taking it easy out. Um, like there are lots and lots of problems with our democracy and with the way that voting works and all of that. So voting is not the only thing that you can do or the only thing that you should be doing. But I think this book did a good job of showing like those things are true, but voting does still matter and you still should do it if you can. So yeah, I really liked this book. The only real negative I have is in contrast to um, a lot of the other topics, which I think were handled really thoughtfully um, with a lot of like complexity and everything. I think they were addressed really well. Um, there were a couple of issues that were just, they felt kind of just thrown into the book. Um, and so in contrast with the things that were handled really thoughtfully and with a lot of depth, those kind of felt um, underdeveloped or incomplete. But other than that, I really liked this. I gave the voting booth four stars. And actually, I don't know when that video is going up, but um, I did kind of a multi-review of books, including this one. So if that is already up, I will link that down below as well. Next, I finished The Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman. Um, and this is a pretty well-known um, short story. And this was the first time I had ever read it. So the premise of this, um, the main character is a young woman who is suffering from what today we would call postpartum depression. Um, but they weren't, they didn't know it as that then. And so as a remedy for that, um, her husband takes her into this country house um, for like, for her to recuperate. And he doesn't let her write, he doesn't let her go out and see people, like he's doing all these things that are considered um, healthy for her, like the medical advice at the time was to do these things. And as the story goes on, we see the toll that this takes on this woman's mental health. She starts getting obsessed with this yellow wallpaper that is in her room. And I don't want to say too much because this is such a short story, but this was really, really good and very effective and also really, really creepy. Um, we get this building sense of dread throughout, like, it, like at first it's kind of subtle, like the things that are going wrong or the things that are making us uncomfortable, but by the end it is like all out, I would consider this almost like psychological horror. Like the ending of this story just really 
I think was very effective. Um, I was reading this all at night, so that might have been part of it, um, but I think this was really well done. I thought the writing was brilliant. I think this is a really thoughtful handling of like feminist topics and um, like a commentary on like the like the hysteria treatments for women, which were basically to um, cut them off from everything and to like isolate them and um, to like not let them see people or to like engage in any activities they wanted and just like enforced um, solitude and not having anything to occupy their time and things like that. Unfortunately, when I looked up Gilman herself, um, she was apparently a like really just disgustingly racist person. So that's disappointing to find out. But this story itself I think was really, really good and I gave it four stars. Next, I finished Bear Town by Frederick Backman and this was a buddy read with my friend Olivia Savannah from Olivia's Catastrophe. Um, and again, I have a whole spoiler-free review on this book. I'm not sure if that's up yet. If it is, I'll link it. Um, but this is a really, really well-known book. It's very popular here on booktube and I think for good reason. Olivia Savannah and I both think this is like a favorite of the year for us. Um, this is about a small hockey town in Sweden and this small hockey town, um, all their hopes are kind of riding on their current hockey team um, because they're hoping that if they are able to play well, um, they're going to get more funding, they're going to get more businesses, it's going to kind of like save their town. Um, and then the book starts with a violent crime being committed. In the rest of the book we see the fallout from that, um, people start taking sides, and we see everything kind of play out from there. And in my spoiler-free review, I talk about how I don't consider the topics this book deals with a spoiler because it's hard to talk about why this book was so powerful and effective without them. Um, so in that video, I do talk about the issues this book deals with. But for the purposes of this wrap-up, I'm not going to mention that in case that's not something you want to know. But very briefly, I thought this book was so powerful and so effective. And I think one of the things it did best is show that these violent acts do not come from nowhere, that there is there is a system in place of the way that we think about people and talk about people and the way that we treat people. Um, things like jokes that aren't funny and that are just really offensive and terrible. Um, things about the things about entitlement um, and the way that that affects the way people grow up. I thought the writing was brilliant. I also want to mention that this book was translated by Neil Smith um, and I think the I think he did a brilliant job because the writing of this book was I think really fantastic, really effective, very detailed on nuanced and also had like the perfect level of description um, and that's a credit to Frederick Blackman himself and Neil Smith his translator. I think the characters are so so well drawn, like the characters that you love just hurt your heart with how much you love them and the character and the characters that you hate um, just make you want to throw things at the wall because of how real life they feel, like the antagonists in this book are like real people. Like there are so many people like them in the world. I also think this book did a great job with the setting um, and like kind of how that affected the plot or the story. Like I know nothing about ice hockey, I'm not terribly interested in ice hockey, um, but this book made me understand why people care about it and specifically understand what it meant to this town and to various people in this town. Um, yeah, I feel like this has been a much less organized review than I would have liked to be, uh, but I obviously gave Bear Town five stars. I thought it was incredible. Again, if you want a little bit more detail, check out my video, um, my separate review on this book, because I do talk about specifically the things that this book deals with, but I thought this was incredible. I think it lives up to all of the hype I've been hearing from people. Next, I finished The Inconvenient Indian, A Curious Account of Native People in North America by Thomas King, and I listened to this on audiobook, which was narrated by Lauren Cardinal, and this is a nonfiction book. Um, that is not, like as the author kind of says in his um, introduction, it's not quite a history according to the author because um, he feels like if he calls it a history that's going to give people certain expectations about the way he tells this, uh, the way he tells this book, um, but there is a lot of factual information in here and just mixed with a little bit more commentary, um, like this is definitely a factual book and I thought this was incredible. Um, first off, I do think that the narrator was brilliant. I think Lauren Cardinal was able to tell this information in a really engaging way and really um, able to communicate the dry humor that Thomas King uses throughout the book, even though he's talking about such upsetting content um, and events. Um, so I do definitely recommend the audiobook if that's something that you're interested in. I think this book was really engagingly written. Um, I think it was incredibly useful information and because it covers both the United States and Canada, I think it gives a much more uh, full picture of the treatment of Native American people or First Nations as they're called in Canada than I think most 
sources do. Um, definitely than we ever talked about in schools that I went to. I think the book also did a great job of addressing specific myths um, that people believe about Native Americans. Like I said, there was a great balance of being engaging and being very, very factually based. There's a pretty wide variety of topics that this book covers. I think one of my favorite chapters was the one that dealt with um, the film industry. So like basically Hollywood's history with Native Americans um, and casting them or not casting them and the kinds of stories that um, that people choose to tell about Native people, and those storytellers are usually not Native themselves. Um, so I just would highly recommend this. Like, again, some of it is very difficult to listen to because of the atrocities that we have been committing against Native people for generations, but uh, if you can listen to this one, I would really highly recommend it. I think I want to get a physical copy of this because I would definitely like to reread this at some point, and I gave The Inconvenient Indian five stars. Next, I finished Such a Fun Age by Kylie Reed. This is a contemporary novel, and we follow our main character, Amira, who is a young black woman. I think she's 25 or 26, and she works as a nanny, and right at the beginning of the book, um, she gets called into work, like, away from a party, and she has to take the little girl that she nannies, um, she has to take her to a grocery store because that kind of calms her down, um, while some other things are going on at her employer's house. And while she's at the supermarket, um, she gets accosted by a security guard because another shopper saw this black woman with a white baby and assumed that she kidnapped her, kind of sets off the course of the book. And it's definitely an important event in this book, like, we do spend time following, like, the fallout from that and how this affects the various characters, um, but I think also that functions as a way to talk about the other themes in this book because this is a book that deals a lot with microaggressions and racism and um, performative activism and like fake woke white people um, and I just think this is such a smart book and the way that it handles those themes are so clever. Um, the writing is really really good and really enjoyable. It's very quick to read um, and even though this is kind of a a slice of life-ish story in a lot of ways um, it was still very compelling like the way that Kylie Reed writes and the way that she the way that she, that she makes you get to know these characters through the way that she describes them and like through interactions is just very very engaging even though a lot of this book is just following kind of day-to-day -day life um, of these characters and like the characters themselves are <laughs> really really well done. Um, I'm laughing because some of them, like the secondhand embarrassment of this book was like sometimes painful but I think it was necessary. And Amira as a main character I really really loved her. Um, she's very, she's like in her mid-20s feeling very lost about what she wants to do with her life, which is, you know, I think relatable for a lot of people in their 20s. Um, and her friendship group I really, really loved. I really loved seeing her with her friends. I also think the humor in this book was great. Like, just the way that Kylie Reed would, like, describe things or people or just, like, I know exactly what you're talking about. Like, there was one reference to, like, the young moms on planes with their, like, Vera Bradley bags and suitcases and, like, their wedge sandals and things. And, like, you read that and you're like, I know exactly the people that you're talking about. I think this book did really brilliant commentary. Um, like I said, I think the characters were exceptionally well drawn, um, even the ones where you don't spend a lot of time on like their individual development or even like spending a lot of time with them in general. I feel like you still know these people very well. The only thing that I wasn't really satisfied with is some aspects of the ending. I do think it was partially intended to be very abrupt and maybe even kind of like mix of satisfying and unsatisfying, um, but there's one character in particular who I think got off way too easy. Um, and I would have liked to see more done to address that, um, which I don't think is just personal preference because I think that the place that Amira was at at the end of the book, I think that could have happened believably and I would have really liked to see that. Um, but other than that, I thought this book was brilliant and I gave Such a Fun Age 4.5 stars. Next, I finished Wishes and Wellingtons by Julie Berry. I actually received this in a giveaway um, and it's also signed, which I did not know was going to happen and I think that is so wonderful. So that makes me really happy. Um, and as you guys know, Julie Berry wrote my favorite book of last year, which was Lovely War. Um, so I was really excited to continue reading her other work. And I did like this one. I didn't love it as much as Lovely War, which to be honest is a hard act to follow. But we follow our main character, Maeve. She goes to a boarding school in London that she really hates. Um, and one day she finds a genie lamp and accidentally wakes him up. And so she's trying to decide what to do with her wishes. And two other people end up getting pulled into this. Um, one of them is her best friend, what was her name? Alice. Um, and one of them is an orphan boy named Tom, who they were kind of enemies, but like they slowly start to become friends during this adventure, um, or this series of adventures. And then it seems like some other people are aware of the genie and they want to um, steal the lamp from Maeve so that they can use it and have that power. And like I said, I liked this. I didn't love it. I did really enjoy the writing. Um, I really love the way that Julie Berry writes. And I also really loved Maeve's friends. So Tom and Alice were like my favorite characters in the book. I think they were so fun. And um, I honestly think they should have been <laughs> maybe the main characters. Like some of my favorite scenes in the book were the ones with them. Um, and like probably my favorite part was 
when Maeve was staying with Alice for um like over Christmas and like they weren't really doing anything related to the genie or anything like they were just like hanging out um and I also really like Tom like I said so I really enjoyed them um unfortunately I didn't really love Maeve herself I actually found her quite irritating at times um for one thing it was like her attitude towards some other people like the way that she like she has so basically she has like one sister that she really gets along with and two sisters that she doesn't like she can't stand and her mother who she doesn't really get along with I don't remember how she feels about her father um but it felt a little bit like not like other girls at times it didn't bother me as much as it normally does because I think it was clear that this was a reflection of Maeve's interests and like her being really young and not understanding that you don't have to be a tomboy to be like a smart or strong woman. But I do wish that the family angle would have been handled differently rather than us getting to hear again and again about how much Maeve doesn't like her other sisters because they care about marriage and dresses or something. Um, so that was a little annoying. She also made some pretty frustrating decisions, but again, she's like, what, 12 years old? She's she's young, so I can like excuse that. But Alice and Tom seemed to make much better decisions, which was another reason I think they would have made better main characters than Maeve. And then I also really didn't like the genie character, which was really disappointing. I didn't even like that whole part of the storyline, which is obviously pretty significant. Um, I guess I had kind of thought from the back of the book and from other stories I have read, um, that throughout the book they would kind of like become friends with the genie or like get to know him better or he would become like at least a little more likable and that didn't really happen. I think there was like a slight softening between them but basically genie was like kind of awful to them and I guess I just assumed based on other books I have read and also like kind of this book's focus on friendship that like one of the aims of the genie storyline would be that they kind of like get to know each other and work together and that really didn't happen so that was kind of on me but like I was disappointed in that so I was disappointed in the way the genie storyline went um I didn't really love some like aspects of the plot in general but I am so glad I read this I did still like it like I said I just didn't love it as much as I was hoping to and I gave Wishes and Wellingtons three stars next I finished Apple in the Middle by Don Quigley and we follow our main character Apple um and her mother has died and her mother was Native American her mother was from the Turtle Mountain Band of the Ojibwe um and Apple didn't really grow up knowing about her mother's family or wanting to know about her family because she had some really um horrible experiences when she was really young um with really racist people and that kind of put her off wanting to know about her culture or connect with her mother's family um so she hasn't done that and then uh, one summer her father decides that he's going to send her off to stay with her mother's family so that she can better get to know um her family background and her mother's family and that's what the rest of this book is about is apple um, starting to connect with her mother's people and just getting to know her family, getting to meet some of her family for the first time um, and start to feel at home there and to kind of reclaim her connection um, to her mother's tribe. And I'm gonna say it like right off the bat I did not rate this book because even though I can point to specific things that I really liked or didn't like, um, I think a lot of the things that even I picked up on as being really well done um, are very specific to the Native American representation in this book and I don't feel like I can sufficiently weigh those good things against things that I maybe think could have been done better like on a technical standpoint. Um, I don't really feel comfortable like basing a rating off of those things so I haven't rated this on Goodreads um, but I'm gonna talk about things that I enjoyed or didn't enjoy. I really really loved Apple's family especially her grandparents and one of her cousins. I absolutely adored getting to see Apple spend time with him and um, getting to know them better and feeling at home there and just all of their interactions were so lovely and so warm and it made me so happy to feel Apple, um, to see Apple being accepted and loved. I also really liked seeing um, so much of the Ojibwe culture or specifically of the Turtle Mountain Band. Apple learns more about their spiritual traditions and their food that they eat um, and just all of these elements of culture that she didn't grow up knowing and so seeing her rediscover those and reclaim those was really wonderful um, and just very affecting in this book. So there there were a few things that I think were done less well um, in my opinion. One of the big ones was the writing. I really really didn't like the writing style of this book and unfortunately that did kind of color my overall experience with the book because obviously everything is filtered through the way the author writes and I just really really didn't like it. Um, it felt almost like stream of consciousness but in a way that was also disjointed. I think maybe the author was was going for a like conversational tone and I think sometimes that came through but again most of the time it just felt really distractingly disorganized and like um just just awkward sentence structure and things like that and I also really didn't like um there's one aspect of the conflict that I was not really happy with um without giving too much away there's a character who was interested in Apple's mother 
and who was kind of like following her around and it kind of seems like he is seeing Apple as like an extension of her mother and I found that really creepy and really disturbing that there was like this romantic history or one-sided romantic history with this character and then he was like following around a teenage girl based on that. It's kind of resolved in a way that makes me think we weren't supposed to feel that way about it. Like we were just supposed to see him as like a generic, like a general kind of antagonist rather than it being like specifically this kind of creepiness. But I think that could have been done better because I was really uncomfortable with that throughout the book and I don't feel like that was dealt with sufficiently. Um, there was also like a kind of last minute tragedy thing that was thrown in that just felt like very out of the blue. I'm not really sure where that fit into like the tone of the story. Um, I guess in a sense it did help Apple like realize some things but it just felt kind of unnecessary um, to have that horrible thing happen in the story. Especially when um, there hadn't really been any indication that that was where the story was going. Although I know that that's how things happen in life sometimes. Also a quick note on the writing. Um, this is not really like a quality issue I guess but some of it was incredibly disgusting and I would caution people if you don't, if you sometimes have trouble reading about like descriptive vomiting scenes, maybe you should give this one a miss because there were several and I kept thinking we were done with them and then another one would happen and it was really gross. Like there are still some descriptions I'm gonna, I'm trying to forget <laughs> uh, from my mind. So as you can see, um, very mixed feelings on this book. There were things I really really loved and I think are so important and then some like technical things that I think really could have been done better, um, especially related to the writing and like the conflict of this book. Um, but like I said at the beginning, I haven't rated this because I don't feel like I'm the proper person to weigh those things. I've also heard from Own Voices reviewers that this book did a lot for them feeling seen, which I think is so important. Next I finished Why They Marched, Untold Stories of the Women Who Fought for the Right to Vote by Susan Ware. This is a nonfiction book um, that tells 19 kind of short biographies of women or one or two men um, who were very important in the fight for women's suffrage in the United States. And another thing that's kind of interesting about the organization of this book is not only is it told through the lives of 19 people um, for the 19th Amendment, but also each um, section or each chapter, it opens with an object um, that is related to the women's suffrage movement in some way. So that way the author gives you context, um, gives you a little more history on the movement and on this particular item, whatever it is, um, and then moves into the more biographical information, which is also, um, which also incorporates issues of the wider movement. And I really, really loved this. I think Susan Ware did a really great job of including stories of people who aren't normally included um, in discussions of the women's suffrage movement. There are quite a few women of color in this book, um, especially black women, who were incredibly important in the fight for women getting the right to vote, but who still faced uh, racism and discrimination even from within this movement that was supposed to be about equal rights. I think Susan Ware did a really great job too of including um, people in general who are just not as well known um, for various reasons. Like I said, it could be uh, for reasons of discrimination. Um, it can also be because like the big figures that we talk about, um, like Alice Paul or Carrie Chapman Catt, like there's a tendency of history to like pick a few kind of mascots almost or like leaders because it's easier to sum up a time period by like picking a few people to focus on. So I think Susan Ware did a really great job of showing some of the scope of people um, who fought for this movement. I also thought the writing was fantastic. Um, it was a really great balance of thoughtful and thorough but also approachable and engaging. Um, like I think that people who don't maybe read a lot of nonfiction. Um, I definitely don't think you need to be intimidated by this book. I think this could be a good kind of starter book. Um, but I'll, also I think people who do read more nonfiction, like you're not going to be, I think, disappointed in the level of detail or research or anything. Um, I think this is a really great balance between those. I also liked the creative structure, um, the use of object history and um, telling this through biographies, which really didn't get repetitive. And it, in a way it didn't feel like you were just reading a bunch of biographies one after the other. Um, it really just felt like you were learning a lot about this period in history and about um, this movement and then also getting to know people who were involved in the movement. Um, my one critique of this book is I think that Susan Ware could have done a little more to acknowledge the negative aspects of some of the people she was talking about. So like I said, I think she did do a pretty thoughtful job of um, talking about the racism of the movement, um, for example, and other issues of discrimination. But I think with some of the specific people she talked about, um, I think she could have been a little clearer on like, yes, they did important things, but they also did some really bad things or believed some really bad things. So like, we should just keep that in mind when we talk about them. Like for example, the chapter on Charlotte Perkins Gilman, who I mentioned earlier in this wrap up, um, she did mention that she was racist and um, you know, I think she might have referred briefly to some of her ideas, but it was a really short section and I don't think it really gave the proper weight to that that maybe it should have. Um, and I, I do think part of this was 
the way that Susan Weir told um, these women's stories is she would talk about their life and their contributions and then she would end the chapter with kind of like the caveats of like, well, here are the other things I did that were not so great kind of thing, um, which I think is a valid structural choice. But they're pretty short sections and I don't think they always gave the appropriate weight to those issues. She could have made it a little clearer um, what some of these women's failings were. But other than that, I really loved this and I gave Why They Marched 4.5 stars. Next, I finished Small Spaces by Catherine Arden and this was a buddy read with my lovely friend Katie from A Sea of Tomes. Um, and this is a middle grade horror book that also deals a lot with grief. Um, we follow our main character Ollie who um, she sees this woman trying to throw a book into a river one day and as a book lover um, Ollie doesn't like that so she rescues the book and she starts reading it and it's a pretty creepy kind of story um, and then the next day she actually goes on a field trip to a farm near where they live. They live in Vermont and things start happening that are exactly like what happened in the book. So she's trying to figure out like what is going on. Um, it starts becoming clear that there are some kind of there's some kind of threat and the only advice that she gets from the woman who threw away the book is to keep to small spaces, um, that open spaces are dangerous. And I am so shocked at how much I love this book because uh, you guys might remember I had a very very negative experience with Catherine Arden's other two books I read which were the first two books in the Winter Night trilogy. I hated those <laughs> but I did want to try this book because it was such a different kind of story that I was like maybe I'll like this more and I I, but I did not expect to love this book the way that I did. Honestly, it's a little wild to think that the same author wrote these because after my other experiences with this author, I was like, maybe she's one of those women who sucks at writing women <laughs> um, because I just felt like Vasya was such a terribly developed main character. Um, but Ollie is wonderful. Um, she is so complex. Like her, the way that she is developed, the way that she has to try and work through her grief, um, the way we see how that is affecting her, um, the development of her friendships in this book is also really lovely and wonderful. Like I just, like the attitude about female characters in this book is so so different from Winter Night, which makes me really happy because I think these characters were just so well developed. Um, the setting and the atmosphere was great. Like this was genuinely really creepy at times, but like the perfect amount of creepy, um, where like I would comfortably recommend this to people who don't usually read like horror or any kind of scary books. Like it was the perfect amount of like enjoyable creepiness and just the fall atmosphere in general. Like this really, this really made me like temporarily wish that I lived in a place that had color changing seasons. That would be kind of exciting for a while. I also thought that the themes of grief were handled so thoughtfully and with so much compassion and nuance. And that was a really important part of this book. Like this is quite a short novel um, and I didn't realize how prevalent the theme of grief was. Like I had heard people talk about that as being an aspect of this book, but I didn't expect it to be handled so extensively and I just thought that was really well done. Um, like I said, I loved all these friendships um, with a couple of kids that she meets along the way. I thought the like plot and mystery and like horror creepiness elements were super engaging and really well done. Um, I really liked the writing in this book. Like I, I just loved this. Like I gave Small Spaces five stars. This is definitely one of my most surprising favorites of the year. And we're actually ending this wrap up on a really high note with back-to-back -back favorites um, because the last book I'm going to talk about is Ray Bearer by Jordan Efueko. This is the first book in a West African inspired fantasy series. We follow our main character Tarasai and her mother has raised her um, to kill the crown prince of this, um, of their kingdom or of this empire. And so she has been, so Tarasai has been training for this her whole life. She finally makes it to the trials for this prince's council, which is how she's going to get close enough to kill him. But the only way that she can get chosen is if she grows to actually care about this prince. Um, so she, so like by definition, she's going to have conflicting loyalties. And that's how this book starts. And that's definitely an important plot element, but there is like so much more going on here. There are so many layers to the story and to this world. And like I already said at the beginning, I absolutely love this book. This is for sure like one of my favorites of the year. Um, I, I'm just so, like so impressed at the craftsmanship of this novel. Um, it's told in several parts that are separated in the book. I think, I think maybe four. And every time we would get to the end of the previous part and start the next one, I was kind of like, wait, but I'm really invested in this story. I don't know if I'm ready for this shift yet. And then every single time Jordan Fuego won me over with the new direction the story took. Like each part just gets better and better and better. And I'm just so in awe of that. Um, like the, the beginning is like a tiny bit slower than the rest as you sort of get um, acclimated to the setting and you kind of start piecing together um, Tarasai's situation and um, what she's supposed to accomplish and everything. And you also get some background information on Tarasai's family and things like that. So there's like a little bit of a slow start, but after that, like this book is just so gripping. Um, I loved the characters. Like Tarasai is a really, really wonderful main character. Like 
you see her struggling throughout the book with how much of her is because of the way her mother raised her and how much of her is like her own person, which I just found very, very poignant and really well explored. Tarsai is just so strong and determined and compassionate and I just really loved her. Like I loved basically all the characters in this book that you were supposed to love. Um, there's a little bit of a romance angle that I, like, it kind of, it went a direction I kind of wasn't expecting, but I kind of was because I was like, wow, wouldn't this be interesting if it like went in this direction instead? And then it did and I was like, I love this. Um, it was just really, really well done. I really loved the friendships and like the support network that Tarasai uh, forms with other characters. I'm actually planning to do a full spoiler-free review on this book, but I just loved this. Like the story and the setting and history of this world are are so complex and like I said, like it's it's really complex and layered without feeling confusing or overwhelming. Um, there were multiple developments I did not see coming <laughs> or I did not think they were going to happen in that way and I just I just really loved this. Yeah, I feel like I'm starting to ramble a little bit, but I adored this book. I gave Ray Bear five stars. Okay, everybody, so those are all of the books I read in the first part of September. Uh, stay tuned for part two of that wrap-up whenever I can get around to filming that. Um, please let me know if you guys have read any of these books, what you thought of them, or if you're planning to pick them up, and let me know a book you loved recently that really surprised you, um, like that you weren't expecting to love that much, because like I'm still reeling from how much I loved Small Spaces um, after my previous experience with that author. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video, and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!